pick. So this afternoon's, the way we start this afternoon is to describe the recursive braiding in your DNA electrically measurably responds to human bliss. You make golden ratio in your aura, your DNA implodes, it braids recursively, gets thicker, and becomes like a donut. This is where we're going this afternoon. And so your DNA, by embedding longer and longer wavelengths in the recursive braiding process, see that's, that's recursive braiding. Notice how fractal that is. So your DNA is a slinky. Where's my slinky? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so your, your DNA is a helix, and when it, in the presence of bliss, or fractal electric field called sacred, and it's very measurable, in the presence of that electricity, implosive, your DNA responds by recursively braiding thread to string to rope to sac rope. And when the phase ratio of the short wave to the long wave has phase discipline, then you get a soul. Then you have microchloridians in your blood, Anakin Skywalker. Then it's called boson seven in, 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 in Montauk. You're a you're time traveler. What happens is your DNA embeds that phase relationship starts imploding electrically. And that then eventually can accelerate charge through the speed of light in the core of the donut of your toroidal DNA, Lord of the Rings story. So this is a short version of our whole afternoon. We're done already. Oh, my God. <laughs> But here's the toroidal DNA. After recursively braiding, you see, the, the DNA palastrates and self-re-enters. And here's the photomicrograph of toroidal DNA. And it's seven sequential recursive braids that it, when it gets that thick, making that tornado. And those seven sequential recursive braids, thread to string to rope to fat rope, seven times, that's called boson seven or the seventh seal, seventh sign, seventh veil, and I lost my slide. <laughs> this is the, the opening of the seventh seal, the seven gates. And they're codified by the seven spin axes of the tetrahedra, which is how DNA braids, and we wanted to tell that story this afternoon. So, to finish your question, going into the next dimension is when you become part of a longer wavelength electric field because another axis of charge rotating is superposed in your plasma, mostly because of what your DNA just did. And that shows up in the harmonic analysis or power spectra. Here is the power spectrum of EKG at the moment of love. We're going to play with tomorrow morning. This is my invention, the heart tuner. And here's measuring the response of DNA to coherent EKG, the effect of love on your genes. This is the measurement. So your DNA goes, sucks up all that beautiful electricity by imploding, recursively braiding. This is the way it's measured. Glenn Ryan did this at my suggestion. Measured the amount of the enzyme associated with the zipper of the braiding process. And so the, the amount, the thickening, <laughs> the plot thickens, Mr. Einstein. So the thickening process, the recursive braiding, is measurable by the increase of the enzyme that holds it together during the braiding process. If you measure that enzyme in the presence of love, DNA says, oh, I just braided because I felt that. And so this increase in the number of harmonics present in your electrocardiogram, what we're going to do together tomorrow morning with you, is called ascension because the number of harmonics inclusive ascend. Harmonic inclusive misdefines vitality in medical studies on heart rate variability. Harmonic inclusiveness is optimized by fractality and golden ratio. In medicine is called the healthy heart is a fractal heart. And therefore, get fractal or get dead. <laughs> no, and so the, the number of harmonics present show the number of axes of rotating charge that have been superposed, and therefore how many dimensions you live in. Sort of the physics of the Sedona bumper sticker, ascend already, we need the space. when you send the, the, the turning blue is the charge radiance, initially ultraviolet, which is triggered by charge implosion. The compression allows the charge radiance. In other words, saying that in the way a biophysicist would discuss subcellular metabolism is that high-quality ultraviolet light is the motor of all cellular mechanics. 
And when you make that high quality light, think of it as sex juice. <laughs> if you find some place for it to go, the blue flash during good sex or menopause, your plasma then can get projective. And that's called a body polis, the definition of the word politics. Was, was that an oxymoron? Wait. Let, let's, let's go back there. Good sex for menopause. That sounds like many... Sounds like military intelligence. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the, the idea is um, this, this is a theory of cancer that we wrote up, goldenmean.info slash cancer. You know that a cancer membrane is diagnosed to the extent that it, the cell is a sphere. If the cell is a sphere, you call that cancer. And cancer's other electrical definition is that contact does not inhibit replication. But now if the cell is a sphere, the membrane is harder, and therefore ultraviolet cannot go through, and therefore contact will not inhibit replication. For the same reason that a sphere is actually quite bad for architecture. It prevents charge projection. An egg is perfect. A sphere is a sin. For cell structure, for pine cone structure, and for people structure, and for architecture structure, a sphere is a sin. A sphere is a perfect container, but it inhibits distribution. So when the living cell is a sphere, the ultraviolet cannot get out. The membrane is harder. When the ultraviolet is stuck inside, that is what triggers premature replication, called cancer. For the same reason that a young girl that doesn't get taught dance and music has babies too soon. Same physics. So the creative juices need a place to go, and the creative juices is the coherent ultraviolet. It is the stuff of love juice. Ultraviolet, the blue fire, blue flame, is the love juice at the cellular level and at the tantra level, in both cases. That's right. For the same reason you have the indigo kids. In blue light in yes, and the blue light special at a cheap restaurant. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> indeed, the, the, the blue plate special, excuse me. No, but, but the, uh, in meditation, indeed. And, but that's why we mention menopause, because you see, if your body does not have to make eggs all the time, there's extra blue flame available. So it, it doesn't, you know, it means when you go to your doctor and say, I'm having a blue flash, I think it's menopause, and he says, I think you need a pill. <laughs> Actually, it, it's, it's, because, it's because your doctor does not know something that your DNA does know, which is that it's fatal to be stuck below the speed of light. It is. It's absolutely fatal to be stuck below the speed of light. And your plasma's way of getting through the speed of light is to squirt its polis, its plasma, through the blue flame, ultraviolet, high frequency coherence, eventually through the speed of light. And that's your way to accelerate, and that's called immortality. That's where we're going with this physics. So actually, when you have that blue flame, the idea is not to take a pill, but the, rather to do something with it. If you're in a metal building, it'll probably drive you crazy. But if you're in nature, you might be able to sail, and those wings